there she is. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? There she is. All right. Sorry for getting on a little late. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. Technical yeah. difficulties, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so sweet. Cool. From Poland. Nice. Cool. So we got a couple people, a couple people on right now. Both are in Florida. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, I was just asking about how how they're doing with with COVID over there. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. The so. United States is doing too great right now. What's that? The United States isn't doing too great right now. They're yeah, doing... we're creeping back up, but we'll see. We'll see how New Jersey gets. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we are right now. So, all right. So we're going to talk about life choices today, right? Life choices, yeah. kind of hitting roadblocks, milestones in our life. Either for me, you know, I've had a lot of things happen career-wise where I've kind of hit, hit, hit a roadblock and felt like I've needed to just shift or evolve myself. And I'm kind of at that point again now. So uh, how about you, Tara? Anything in particular that, uh, that you wanted to bring up today? I'm finding myself getting a little frustrated with stuff that's going on at work. And I think some choices that I made a couple years ago are affecting the way I want to handle them. Mm -hmm. so one positive thing that's happened to me lately is I'm seeing some growth in the way I handle getting frustrated about my career. So mm -hmm. I can talk about that. Sure. Yeah. Going to, uh, you know, so what, um, what in, in particular have you found? Because I know you've been going through a lot of instances where you kind of, I know you left a career and then you kind of went back and you had all these, you were kind of going through these moments of uh, evolution within yourself or like what brought you to the point where you really needed to shift your, where your mindset started shifting a little bit. Like you hit a point where you just, you hit a, like I said, like an obstacle or something where you just felt like you couldn't do it anymore or what was going through your mind? I did. This was in late 2015. And I started feeling, I guess the best word to use is overlooked. And this is something I've been mm -hmm. candid about with my coworkers. I felt like I wasn't contributing enough because I was never going to be skilled enough. I wasn't going to gain the information they were giving me well enough. I just wasn't a good problem solver. So I felt like, well, if these are the problems I'm having, then the grass is always greener on the other side, right? So I should just mm -hmm. look find a career. I wasn't trying to figure out whether I could be happier in my current career by letting my manager know, hey, you know, maybe I could take some courses or I'm feeling really weak in this area. What can we do to improve me? I just mm -hmm. ran away from my job. Mm. So I kind just because you I, just because you felt like uncomfortable, you felt uneasy, or you felt almost like you were being attacked in in a certain way, or yeah, you know, I started. Or you said overlooked, right? Yeah, and I was interpreting mm -hmm. things as attacks that turned out to not be attacks. So when I was getting a job that I thought was pretty easy or something I had done for many years, and I wasn't getting opportunities to do more challenging stuff. That could have easily been because people thought I already had enough on my plate or they just like to have that control. So maybe sometimes they, it's, it's no act of spite, but they don't think about how they could offer some work to someone else. They're just like, oh, okay, well, I know this. I'm interested in this. I'll just do mm -hmm. it. Okay. So instead of working with my, my coworkers to kind of allocate work differently, I was like, well, Oh, okay, this must mean that nobody wants me to do anything different than what I'm doing now. This means they just think I'm inadequate at what I'm doing and I must be so embarrassing. So I'm just going to leave this job because it's just not a good fit. And that's like the mm -hmm. unspoken message that my coworkers are sending me through their behavior. But then when mm -hmm. I told them I was leaving, I got all this shock, like, Oh my God, but you're such a good part of the team. Like, why do you leave? And, <laughs> right. and that. So I right. could have just had conversations with them about how I wasn't satisfied without telling them I was going to quit the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of like a mental battle for you, right? Yeah, it was. And then I left for another job that was 
absolutely not for me. So it made me reflect on what, what battles do I really want to fight in my career, right? Like, do I want to uh, focus on a specific problem without concluding that the whole job is wrong and build my relationships with my coworkers that way by being more honest and being more direct in what I want to do? Or do I want to make impulsive decisions? And that's something that I think is generally something I struggle with. It's like, mm -hmm. well, if, something, if something disappoints me or if I feel rejected or like I'm not good enough, I just want to run away from what's making me feel that way. But that doesn't help me grow as a person at all. Yeah. I shouldn't be on the run looking for something cushy and safe. Absolutely. I've, I've totally experienced this too. I mean, I've mm -hmm. gone through many evolutions of where I've done complete overhauls as you know um you know i, I left a, a corporate job years and years ago and um i was i was really unsatisfied with it and you know unlike you 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 decided that it it wasn't it was more you it wasn't the job or something like that is that kind of how you conclude it was the way you were handling certain totally. instances totally. for me it was more it was more along the lines of like this is not what i want to do i guess you know, it was, it was more like soul searching for me. So I guess mine was like on a little bit of a deeper level where I left the corporate world and pursued, um, ended up going to acupuncture school and uh, went into a holistic field did a total like from ph pharmaceuticals to holistic, you know, like total 180 mm -hmm. type thing, um, which was difficult. But, uh, but, you know, you have that, that instance where you, you feel stuck, right? Mm -hmm. in a certain way. So you could either run away, you could make a change. So there's so many different options, you know, but it is all about analyzing. So for you, you know, you ran away for a little bit, but then you, after all that was said and done, you came back and you analyzed the situation and you decided that, you know, it was more the mental battle, right? Oh, yeah, totally. It was more I mean, the mental battle than just, you know, distracting yourself or running away, things like that. Yeah. yeah, you're totally right. And it's interesting because I know that you, you've you drawn your conclusions about your career, like you said, totally different reason. You're in totally different headspace about what you should be looking for. So when you were in the corporate world, what made you decide this is just not a place I can exist in a healthy way? You know, it. it um, I don't know if it was necessarily the work. I mean, it kind of was. It was very... I felt I was feeling unfulfilled, but it was also I was feeling stressed out. I was feeling anxious. I started, um, you know, I had binge eating issues popping up again, like old mm -hmm. issues popping up. And um, yeah, it, it just got to a point where I, I at one point had a nervous breakdown. Like I was just feeling so overwhelmed with everything. And it was kind of like this buildup of things over time where one day I, I had to go outside and I was trying to catch my breath and my heart was racing and I couldn't. I couldn't, you know, I was, I was having some sort of breakdown, some sort of meltdown. And, um, and I think that was the turning point where I was like, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Like it's, um, I spent a long time, you know, and I think a lot of people do this. They, they do a job, you know, their, their career for so long and they feel unfulfilled, but they do it because they don't feel like there's any way out or there's no, you know, they worry about money. That was a big issue for me. Like, how the hell am I going to do this? I have, I have a stable job, <laughs> you know, I have health benefits. Um, I'm making a decent income, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like the job of my dreams, but if I leave, like, what's my family going to say? What am I going to do for money? Like, I'm not going to have health insurance, you know, which is a big issue for a lot of people right now. And, um, and it was just this mental toggle, mental battle between, you know, how I was feeling inside and on the outside feeling that there was no way, no way out of it. You know, you feel like there's no escaping because of society or because of family or because of just the superficial, the material stuff on the outside, right? So it's like this mismatch, this disconnect. So it's, um, it's a very difficult thing, but I got to the point where I eventually I, I did leave. I mean, I, I ended up, I enrolled in acupuncture school and I was going to school while working full time. So you know, I, I sacrificed a few things in the process. I moved back home with my parents. I, um, which was, which was fun. <laughs> I, um, Imagine that being great. gave up pretty much three years of my weekends because it was like eight hours of class every Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, it was realizing that 
you know, it is possible, but it may take a little bit of sacrifice or a little bit of shifting things. Um, it's yeah. just thinking outside the box. So for me, it was like, okay, I have to move back in with my parents temporarily, not the, you know, not the ideal situation for somebody in their 20s, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it is what it is. And, um, and it all worked out in the end, you know, so, um, yeah. Because you're good. I mean, you, you weigh the pros and cons. It's not like, if you had this super tumultuous relationship with your parents, you knew you'd be miserable there, that you would have just gone right back to living with them full time. Mm -hmm. there was yeah, it was kind of, you know, it, either I, I, you know, I'm out on my own and I stay at this job, but I'm feeling mm -hmm. stressed out and overwhelmed and things like that. So it's kind of, you know, at the end of the day, you always have a decision, you always have a choice, which way you mm -hmm. want to go, but just realize you're never truly stuck where you are. Right. It's, it's oftentimes that we're just looking, we're just looking in this one narrow, narrow view, right? But there's other, right. there's other views, there's other things around us, we're just not seeing it. We're not seeing the big picture enough. In a lot of cases. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with that. I totally agree. And I think mm -hmm. that it can work in where you currently are, like, in whatever life situation, I think that's something that I've learned from making my impulsive choices here and there. It's like, okay, well, I feel stuck for some reason. Do mm -hmm. I have to feel stuck? Like, can I take some kind of action that doesn't involve leaving my current situation? Could I maybe just reshape it? Like right. Maybe change the yeah. way I think about it by telling the people who are in the situation with me how I feel more. And I think over the last five years or so, I've gotten a lot better at communicating with people about things that make me uncomfortable that might make them uncomfortable too. Because, you know, I live in this fear that I'm going to offend somebody, hurt somebody's feelings because they think that I'm totally happy and I'm not. It doesn't mean they've failed me. Mm -hmm. It just means there's something going on that, that they, because they have their own life, might not realize is making me feel stuck, making me feel overlooked. And we can work on it together. It's not like a, oh, I'm not entirely satisfied. So you have to cater to me and and you have to do this laundry list of things to make me happy. It can be a collaborative process. Yeah, I think it's, it's a matter of putting ourselves in somebody else's shoes in a lot of cases. Yeah. So in life, if we want to get what we want out of another person, um, I know that sounds kind of like very superficial, but, you know, think of what the other person wants or mm -hmm. put yourself in the other person's position. And, yeah. you know, a lot of times how you pick up on the signals that you're picking up on somebody else, the, the perspective is completely off. Like it's, it's your perception of it and your, your reality of it. Um, when really that other person's <laughs> reality is, is so much different. You know what I mean? Like the way we, we react to things, we think it's all about us all the time. Yeah. But oftentimes yeah. it's not. So if we can put ourselves and, and, make it more about the other person and where they're coming from. I think there's, there's more of a clear understanding there. We can kind of take a step back from it instead of just reacting and thinking it's always about us and, um, yeah, yeah. and make better decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point. Um, I think what you're saying makes me, the, the concept of it makes me more mindful in the way I phrase things with people. Right. So it's like, if I'm talking to a manager, it doesn't have to be my current one, about something that made me feel like I wasn't getting a good enough opportunity. You could come at it like, well, I know that you have a ton going on. You're under a lot of pressure. You're not supposed to be nitpicking my day to day. So I wanted to let you know that I'm looking for more opportunities and maybe we can make that happen. That could be something that makes me feel less stuck. but I'm, I'm trying to put myself more in the other person's shoes. Like, why was I leaving this history of thinking that everybody is thinking about me so much? Right. It's like, oh, Tara yeah. sucks. We have to <laughs> deliberately deny her these opportunities. Everybody's against you, man. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's right. against you. Yeah, I mean, we, we often feel that way, right? Right, guys, we feel that 
that everybody's against us or everybody is, you know, the world is out to get us when that's, that's really not the case because you think about it. Most people are only thinking of themselves. They're not thinking about you, you know, <laughs> it sounds terrible, but it's, but it's true if you think about it. Right. I mean, think of yourself, you're going up your day. Yeah. You care about people and things like that. But a lot of times, I mean, what you just mentioned, if you're thinking it's all about, it's all about you, right? You're thinking, Oh, it's all about me. Like this person hates me. It's all me, 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 then guaranteed like, or there's a good chance that that other person's thinking the same thing, you know, or they might be intimidated by you. You, you don't know, you know, so uh, everybody is, is different. Yeah. So if you if any of you guys have experienced something similar, if you're feeling stuck in a certain way, you know, either in, career or anything else in your life, you know, let us know. Maybe we could help you out a little bit with some, some of our experiences. Um, so, so how, how are you feeling now as far as the stuckness or, I mean, do you feel like you're in a, in a better place because I, you've kind of shifted your, your mindset a little bit or shifted the perspective? Yeah. You know, I, I'm going through a period now where I feel like I need to have some, awkward conversations, not so comfortable conversations with coworkers about how I would want to contribute more, but it seems like the work is not available. And that could be for a, a myriad of reasons. It's something I'd need to explore, right? So it's like, that's what I've learned from my past impulses. It's like, all right, well, if I was in this situation in 2014 or 2015, I'm sure that I would be looking on Indeed and LinkedIn for job opportunities. Cause it's like, oh, okay, well, I don't really feel like I'm getting enough work. And I'm not challenging myself enough or being mm -hmm. challenged. So uh, this just means the job's not right. You know, that whole thing like, well, everybody just wants to give the work to the good people. They don't want to give it to me because I suck. I failed at, um, at that At that point, like where you said you would go on job searching, things like that. Mm -hmm. Did you have a feeling of desperation at that point? Was that what it was? Mm -hmm. Or it was just, it was, yeah, the feeling of yep. desperation. Yep, yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that feeling that, that this stuff that no, like nobody is doing anything to me. Like no one has ever come to me and been like, yeah, you know, we didn't want to give you that project because you really are not performing to our standard. Mm -hmm. So no one's saying that to me. They're doing their work. They're, they know I'm a grown up, and if I'm, if I'm upset or feeling stuck about something, then it's my obligation to speak up. So meanwhile, instead of speaking up and trying to make things better for everybody, I'm just feeling this desperation like, oh, okay, I have to get a new job. Like, I have to. Yeah. As much, it's really funny. Like, did you ever feel this contradiction? It's like, as much as I'm terrified of change in general, I get these desperate moods where I crave change mm -hmm. so like oh i was dissatisfied today me too I, I hear you, you know, i hear I you gotta, I gotta go. yep yep <laughs> you know and then yeah. you, um, you, oh. you almost you almost become addicted to that to that change yeah. i know I've, I've had that in my life where it's like and i think it's because it's like the temporary high right and yes. i've done this a lot in my career where it was like I, you know, you get the good feeling from like a new job or opportunity or somebody giving you the attention or opening the door for you. It makes you feel really good. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you always want that. And it's like, you do a job for a while that goes away, obviously. Right. The, the high wears off and then you're yeah. always seeking for, you know, the next thing, the next drug. Um, so yeah, I, I completely hear you on that. It's, it's kind of like, we fear change, but at the same time, it gives us that, that temporary high where a lot of us, that's why we don't want to stay where we are. And, you know, they, they say that, that life works in cycles. So for women, it's, it's seven years for men, it's eight years. And I've actually noticed this in my life where every around seven years, I'm in need of a change. I'm in need of a change. Either it's, you know, a relationship or it's, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's job, you know, for the most mm -hmm. part. Um, and it's, it really is true. So I don't know if you've noticed that in your life where you kind of hit, you're kind of cruising along a little mm -hmm. bit in life. And then you hit a point where you're just like, I don't know, you're just like hit a roadblock, right? You hit an obstacle. And well, um, you mentioned, cause I mean, I, I joined, this is the company I work for now. I joined in 2006. And I noticed 
I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you if, if I started getting these desperate feelings earlier than that. Mm -hmm. But I know that in 2013, there was definitely this feeling like I needed to be impulsive. So seven years later, there was that whole, oh, well, you know, now I hit a brick wall. So, and, and there was searching that went on and off, you know, I would get into these, these feelings of desperation and I would say, oh, okay, well now I have to look for a new career. But then my spirits would get picked up for whatever reason, or I'd get distracted by something else. And I stayed in that job. And then it was in 2015 where I was like, okay, well now I'm going to get really serious about it because I just think I don't have a future here. So I made mm -hmm. this choice. And then I went to a place that, you know, it's like you, you romanticize. It's like you said, it's the high of being accepted to a new right. kind of life. So and then you're there, you're there and you realize it's not, it's not so, it's not so peachy. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't do any research about, well, I did some, but not enough research about this company, about what it would be like to work there. I looked at the, what, the YouTube videos that their marketing committee made. Like, of course, it's going to look like the best company on earth. <laughs> You'd be like on a beach, <laughs> beach somewhere, like, right. it's like oh, well, somebody rubbing your feet while you're, you know, typing. Yep. Yeah. So I was so excited. And then I get there and I, th I thought, oh, maybe instead of looking at those videos, I should have looked at like Glassdoor reviews from actual mm -hmm. employees. And you go on Glassdoor and you're like, this company's awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always good to check reviews, especially yeah. like, I don't know, some of those websites. Um, but yeah, I, I totally hear you. I totally hear you with that. With that. Okay. Um, oh, I, I see a couple of my, uh, my friends join, my friend Todd, my friend Paul's. Oh, on. hey guys. What's up? Okay. <laughs> Welcome. We're talking about life choices. We kind of got into a little bit on um, career shifting, things like that. Um, Anything, you know, other than, than career-wise, have you found, like, yourself at a point where you just feel stuck or you feel like you hit an obstacle at some point where you feel like there's, like, this just point where you need to decide to go one way or the other? Anything like that as far as? Mm, you know, I can't say that I've hit anything quite that interesting yet. You know, if I if I'm hitting a point in my life where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make a decision to do something that's going to be a big change. It's it's pretty unfortunate because I don't associate that with anything that I've done non impulsively. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's been such a good learning experience for me. And sometimes I've made impulsive decisions that worked in my favor. So like for places I've lived like oh okay this this place i'm living in now is so frustrating i gotta go not really doing a whole lot of research about where i'm moving to but i've done right. enough right and sometimes i move to a good place sometimes bad but mm -hmm. when, when i felt like i was at a real crossroads like okay i'm so dissatisfied at this point that i have to really rip a band-aid off here and yeah. go down the road it's, it's been made on impulse. So I think I'm waiting for the next opportunity I get to really feel like I need to do an overhaul and see whether I can do it more mindfully. Because I had told you that's something that I'm working on now, like with my therapist and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and you, It's like just the art of being more mindful and not impulsive. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's you have... Imp imp being impulsive and then you have being intuitive right so you could make mm -hmm. you could make a crazy rash decision out of your intuition mm -hmm. but you can also do it out of impulse or out of desperation so mm -hmm. I think that is kind of if anybody is at a crossroads where you feel like very stuck somewhere in your life anywhere in your life it could be career it could be a relationship it could be location where you live um, really ask yourself is this coming from a place of desperation where I just want to be impulsive, uh, just thinking out of my conscious head, or is this coming, you know, this quick decision I want to make? Is it like a gut feeling I'm having, you know, mm -hmm. where it's just this, this intuitive feeling. Um, there's a very, very big difference between the two. So if you can differentiate the two, then you can really have a better understanding of, you know, how, how the decision is going to go down, you know, and maybe, you know, impulsive, sometimes that works out too, you know, you, you don't know, but, um, you know, if you're doing it from a place of desperation and lack, 
then it's probably, you know, chances are it's not going to work in your favor as, as much as if it's coming from your gut feeling, because your gut feeling is your, your inner self, your higher self, your inner knowing telling you that, okay, this is the right decision for me. Something is just telling me, or I'm feeling like this urge to go do something. Yeah. You know? So. And it makes Absolutely. me think of the choices you've made, right? Like, what's, what's your opinion on this? Like, when you just talked about how you decided to go into an acupuncture career. You knew so much about acupuncture at that point, and there was something that was affecting your intuition, right? Like, your inner self guided toward this new career. But when I make a decision that involves a big change, it's, it's really because I just have this need to escape my current thing. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like at the end of the day, what I'm heading toward that's different doesn't really matter. I'm not really paying so much attention to the quality of what I'm going to toward. Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, it's fine because what I'm leaving behind sucks. So what's next has to be good. Yeah. You, you want to know a secret though, Tara? Mm -hmm. when, I, when I decided to make the career change and go to acupuncture school, it, it wasn't completely intuitive. It really wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was coming from a place of, of desperation a little bit because I was very unfulfilled. I was very unhappy. And I was like, I don't know what the hell to do. Really? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest. I picked up one of those, what's, what's your parachute, that parachute book, like the, the book that tells you what career you should do. And acupuncture <laughs> is one of them. So that, that is my true story of how I, how I came to be yep, in the holistic field. But it opened doorways and it led me kind of to where I am now which is very funny, but I'm also at a crossroads right now where I'm having that same feeling, but it's not a feeling of desperation. It's more the intuition calling me to do something else, to shift myself. And that's why I'm, I'm doing daily videos and I'm uh, doing all these things that something inside of me is kind of shifting me away from what I was just doing. And it's been exactly mm -hmm. about seven years. So <laughs> the timing is right wow. with that. But, uh, but yeah, it, you know, it came from a little, definitely a point of desperation in, in a sense, you know, because I was, I was in a sense trying to escape okay. because I was just feeling very unhappy and fulfilled. So, yeah. you know, you, you never really know how it's going to turn out. For me, it turned out, it's kind of like acupuncture school and things like that was, is kind of like the gateway to something else I feel, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of opened the doorway to, uh, have me look within myself a little bit more rather than if I was still at just like a corporate job or something like that, where I'm just doing very superficial things. Um, it allowed me to actually work with people one-on-one -on -one and really find connection with other people and um, especially like the emotional connection and mm -hmm. really shift my thinking and my mindset and, um, and just give me a whole new realm of, of experience into that world. So um, never think that just because you made an impulsive decision that it's not necessarily going to lead you down another path. I mean, it may be a little bit of intuition in there too. You just don't recognize it or you don't realize it. That's You're not hearing that voice. Like it seems like it's coming out of a place of desperation, but maybe it's also coming from, from somewhere else. Like you're, you have an inner knowing that that's just what you need to do. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's a good point. I mean, have you yeah. noticed? been long enough where you can notice some changes in yourself since you made this new career choice oh yeah definitely I mean um just for one you know uh I wouldn't be doing like a IG live or anything <laughs> that's for sure so yeah. it's uh yeah it's kind of going out of my element a little bit mm -hmm. but realizing that there's uh I you know I feel like I have a message to share or I have something, either past experiences to share with other people. And I feel like while I could do that one-on-one -on -one with people, now it's gotten to a point where I feel like I could reach a larger, larger stream or larger audience, mm -hmm. you know, doing, doing like an on, the online thing or doing videos or whatnot. So, uh, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. You know, it's always a, I feel like life is always an evolution. You know, we're yeah. always evolving as human beings. So just because we like something or we love something, uh, doesn't mean that we'll always love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you could be happy, you could be totally t content. And, and this happened with me too. You know, I was in a, a job, a position where I thought it was my purpose years ago. I thought it was what I would always be doing. And then years later, things shifted again. 
things mm-hmm. shifted again. It's like, I used to hate Indian food, you know, and then I tried it again many years later and now I crave it. Now I love, love this stuff. So it's like, um, really you, you're always changing. You're always evolving. That's just mm-hmm. life. The world is always changing, right? People are always changing. Relationships are always changing. So who you were friends with many, many years ago, or like in grade school, you may not be friends with them anymore, you know, and maybe you're meeting new people and it's opening you up to, to different uh, opportunities in your life. So, mm-hmm you know, never remain stagnant. You know, it's kind of like, and when, if you do feel stuck, you know, realize you're, you're never stuck. Like we're made to, we're made to evolve. It's okay. It's it's not a bad thing to feel stuck. It's actually a good thing because it means, okay, there's something else on the other side of that stuckness for me. You know, it's, it's usually something amazing, something great for myself, something amazing for myself. You know, I may not know what it is yet. And that's why we're always trying to force ourselves to figure everything out, right? We're trying to figure out the how. But it's right. not so much about the how, it's about the why. Why we yep. do something or why we want something in our life, right? So it's digging totally. a little bit deeper, totally. I think. So, yeah. And it, it's funny, too, because I know you and I have had our, our share of conversations about how other people influence us. Mm-hmm. So we can get in a space where we're ready to change. But I know for me, there are certain members of my family who don't, they're more traditionalist, right? Like, so they don't understand if you, if you get a job when you're pretty fresh out of college and the benefits are good and the salary's good and your coworkers aren't harassing you or, mm-hmm. you or anything, then why would it be common sense to want to change that? Right. You know, you, you stick with it and you look forward to your retirement and your mm-hmm. weekends and you're nice and safe and right. If you're, Safety. If you're trying to that's, retire, foolish. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's how my family's been too. you know, traditional, mm-hmm. my father, he's still like, oh, you should just, you know, be a nurse or go to school and, you know, uh, do, you know, didn't, didn't agree with me going like the holistic route or, or doing things where, um, I didn't have like a steady, stable income or job or health benefits, things like that, because it's, it's a different generation, you know, it's a generation of safety and protection. It's like, okay, you know, my mother was a teacher, you were either what, like a teacher or nurse back in the day, right? Right. And uh, both my parents had nine to five jobs and got the benefits and retired and, and all that good stuff. But, you know, I think nowadays, people are kind of searching for more, they're kind of waking up to the fact they're, looking inside themselves a little bit more and they're saying, okay, like I, I don't feel fulfilled or I don't feel aligned or they see other people doing other things with their lives or going out of their comfort zone. And they're saying, Hmm, uh, you know, it's making me think a little bit like, am I really happy where I am? Am I, am I happy? I mean, I'm happy just working for, you know, 60 years and then retire, you know, waiting until retirement to, to uh, feel free or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, uh, you know, money is always an issue for people with, uh, with kind of moving beyond that feeling of stuck. You know, I feel like that is one of the biggest blockages. I know it is for me. Um, It always has been, you know, all these money blocks and okay, how, how is this going to work out? And we always Mm -hmm. have to try and think about, you know, in the linear fashion, like I can't do this until I have like my financials set or I have a plan Mm -hmm. on how to break out of break out of this cycle in order to be happy. Right. You know, so it's a little backwards. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah. So what do you anything else like you wanted to mention as far as I don't know if you guys have any questions, comments? You know, if you're going through anything similar, let us know. We'd be happy to uh, to help you out if we can, or just say hi. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know what else was on my mind for this. No, I, I mean, I think we have a family dynamic all day. You know that. Yeah, yeah. We won't get into that. I don't know how much time we have actually, but um, yeah. I mean, if there's there's nothing else, like I think we. Um, we covered a lot of bases as far as like, you know, feeling stuck in your career and just kind of wanting to break out of it, break out of the yeah. element. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it is it is important what you're saying. Like, you have to think about why you really want to make a change, right? And sometimes that can can do what it's done to you, and it can propel you forward, right? And it it works out for you so much better. And sometimes it can make you pump the brakes a little bit. And it's like, well, maybe what can help me is right here and doesn't involve propelling myself out of my current situation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. you think about like, if, if you think about why you're unhappy, why you want the change, I guess you, you come to a conclusion on how much labor you want to put in, right? And the risk you want to take and you gotta, you gotta get your facts straight too, you know? Get, get the confirmation and work with other people to figure out whether you really should be moving forward. I mean, that's the way it's worked for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. To each their own, you know, everybody has their own method, but yeah, it's, it's digging deeper inside and really asking yourself, well, why, like what's, what's making me unhappy? Am I just trying to run away from things or is it really true? I feel truly unfulfilled and I need, I need something more, any more purpose in my life. Right. In a sense. Yeah. And your, cool. your answer, like your, your um, conclusion has been different than mine in that you, you're able to do these things relatively independently because you did need to move forward to be happier. But I think with I me, did, yeah. people just scare me. So I want to run. <laughs> people are freaking scary. I tell you. <laughs> no, that's not true. Some people are cool. I like some people. <laughs> you included certainly you yeah, yeah. There's a circle out there that I love but you gotta you gotta find your your soul tribe they say right yeah exactly the people who resonate with you so some people are not everybody's gonna resonate with you but you know don't don't take it to heart just realize that you know how people what they say is often a projection right so it's mm -hmm. kind of the mirror right what you're yeah. spitting out is basically what's what's coming back yeah right or how you feel how you feel like uh unfulfilled in, in some way you may project that onto somebody else yeah oh absolutely yeah. you want to keep so. the, the darkness going right yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly on that note um thank you for joining me today thank you guys everybody here who joined um that's uh that's a wrap for today mm -hmm. any any last words no i just i want to thank everybody and thank you for having me on it was a good chat yeah, definitely. All right, everyone. We will have a great day and we will see you next time. Peace.